Well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, it has been some years since I last spoke at, I believe, No Time to Wait 2, um, but I'm very pleased and grateful to be back with this community today to talk about um, the very different kind of work I've been doing for the past four years. Um, my name is Ethan Gates. My title is Software Preservation Analyst for Yale University Library, and I'm the user support lead for the EASY, that's E-A-A-S-I, program of work um, and to talk to you about some of the challenges uh, we have faced building uh, emulation into existing archival and cultural heritage workflows. So first things first, what is EASY? EASY stands for Emulation as a Service Infrastructure and is a Mellon and Sloan Foundation funded program of work started and hosted at Yale in 2018. I say a program of work rather than a particular project because the grant encompasses uh, more than just software development. It is a collection of coordinated people and projects who have the central aim of expanding use of the emulation as a service or EAAS framework for born digital preservation and access. The emulation as a service framework is an open source server stack originally designed and built by the BWFLA project at the University of Freiburg in the mid 2010s, uh, now maintained commercially by OpenSLX. Um, it's essentially the same folks over there. It allows remote access to and centralized management of a number of underlying open source emulator applications such as QMU, Sheepshaver, Vice, and more. That said, Though easy, the grant doesn't just involve software development, we will also frequently use the term easy to refer to the easy programs platform, by which in turn, I mean particular tagged supported versions of emulation as a service um, and the network of partner organizations and individuals who are using and able to exchange resources using that platform. As I said, we've been going for four years. So that's two rounds of funding, which has covered among other things, new features for EAAS for that open source framework, including the ability to exchange data uh, in the form of software and emulated environments, kind of like virtual machines um, between installations of emulation as a service via the open archives initiative protocol for metadata harvesting. Uh, it also includes a new web client for emulation as a service with improved user experience UI design. We've also been using the easy platform itself to gather information about historical software and feed that metadata into Wikidata via the Wikidata for Digital Preservation Project. Um, the funds have also sponsored extensive efforts in documentation, training, and support, including hands-on workshops, online guides, demo videos, um, et cetera, all to get folks more comfortable with using easy or just emulation generally. And last but not least, it's included administrative efforts to build a sustainable service model around the easy platform. And this last bit is really the core of the, the current and final round of grant funding from Mellon and Sloan that we are in right now, um, which will last through approximately mid 2024, at which point the goal is to slowly transition to being self-sustaining in one form or another, some combination of overhead or guaranteed funds from a fiscal host, um, paid support plans for maintenance and cloud hosting, whatever uh, other sources we can put together. I will talk a bit more about that in a few minutes. I do want to show you a quick demo video just to give you a taste of what I'm talking about. So in a way you could think of easy like a virtual machine management platform, except the virtual machines are all old machines, combining the power of multiple system emulators to give us access to any historical version of Mac OS, Windows, Linux, et cetera. We can also upload resources like software installation media or content from born digital collections like this very important sample that I have pulled to show you all today. And using the easy interface, we can match these emulated computing environments and resources and run them together so we can re-experience critical multimedia heritage like multimedia cats. Before European settlers emigrated to North America, no native cats lived there. Perhaps brought to a So, uh, inspired by this year's theme of transparency and trust, rather than talk to you much more about the platform itself, I'd like to take my remaining time to address some of our biggest challenges in the EASY program. 
um, because I have to say that we don't truly lack for technical solutions to our problems. I could sit here literally all day and rattle off the many features we would like to build and exactly how they could improve assessment and access workflows for foreign digital collections. But the truth is that we will not get any closer to our vision of seamlessly incorporating emulation into access workflows across the field without serious coordinated effort and advocacy in a few key areas. The first is in copyright practice. Uh, though easy itself is open source software, it enables organizations to upload copies that they own of legacy proprietary software. And by which I mean by legacy, I'm talking about out of market and out of support proprietary software so that they can in turn use that proprietary software to address material from their born digital collections that depend on those applications. This is the philosophical heart of what we're doing, which is that archivists and patrons users of digital archives should all have the option of accessing historical born digital material in its original computing environment. We are guided by expert legal consensus that using legal so uh, legacy software in this way with guardrails for user permissions and such um, as a tool to address hidden collection dependencies at least in the United States falls under accepted fair use copyright practice for libraries, archives, museums, and similar efforts for the public good. However, it has proven one thing for us that is the easy team as tool makers and service providers to say that, and another for legal counsel and leadership and administration at various cultural organizations to fully agree and adopt this practice and adjust collection access restrictions or workflows accordingly. And even when or if advocacy efforts are successful at overcoming such hesitancy, the limitation of fair use to the jurisdiction of the United States still severely handicaps our options in terms of international reach. And that doesn't just mean partnering with organizations in other countries, which we would like to do, bringing them into the easy network, um, but it also puts strain on our technical abilities. That is, we would love to set up distributed cloud deployments or mirrors of our platform in different regions of the world, that would actually improve the emulation performance and experience for say, a student in the Netherlands who wants and has the permissions um, to view an item from Yale's special collections. Um, but that's still something of an open question as to how, if how we could make such an arrangement. And these kind of gray areas, even perceived gray areas, impact us as well in terms of the underlying open source emulator projects that Easy in turn relies on. Emulators themselves often sit in this misunderstood, I would say, legal zone. The practice of making emulators has frequently been upheld by jurisdictions across the globe, but it's still also under constant threat from wealthy hardware manufacturers, just Apple, Nintendo, and the like. Um, so they frequently remain in the realm of volunteer or even hobbyist projects rather than the well-funded, stable, carefully maintained projects that they deserve to be, given how essential they are to digital history. That lack of stable support then has ripple effects with an effort like easy when you're trying to build a coherent service on top of them. And these are likely common or even redundant concerns at this late point of the conference, um, but I mentioned at the top of this presentation that we are ourselves currently a grant funded project. Um, that particular funding is currently scheduled to run out again approximately mid 2024. We are in the middle of very promising conversations with Yale Library leadership about continuing to serve as fiscal host of the program. But no matter which way you slice it, as we hopefully expand and improve the platform, we will run into an increasing problem of balancing research and development on new and even better features with maintaining something stable for our public user base. Uh, we are supporting the easy platform as a way to provide access to obsolete legacy software but at the same time, easy is itself software. Without upkeep and careful design, it will grow old, it will grow vulnerable, it will itself eventually become obsolete. Um, OpenSLX, our developers are not a big team. Easy is now paying for two full-time developers plus some additional work on contract for the user interface, but the program cannot grow as big as our dreams without additional staffing. Um, and available funding models like grants, uh, subscriptions or service uh, models, fiscal hosting, et cetera, all come with their own choose your own adventure set of benefits and drawbacks. So why am I telling you all this? Um, what am I specifically asked from the No Time to Wait community? The first is advocacy. Uh, we can better fight all these challenges, the more real life examples and conversations we can have with actual collections and collection staff. So please, if you have software dependent 
AV material and emulation or easy um, is something that you think might help if that demo of multimedia cats are registered at all. You don't even have to be like 100% for sure. I know I have something I want to emulate. Um, even just talking through what is or isn't required or is or isn't helpful to real staff helps us with the service design pieces. Um, so please get in touch. I wanna hear about your non-linear editor project files, um, your flash VRML multimedia, your files that can only migrate using a piece of proprietary software that is itself obsolete. Uh, let's talk. We can also talk in the context of a wider community. Easy itself has a community forum. You're welcome to join. It's linked in my slides um, at the end of this, but I also encourage checking out the Software Preservation Network, which is a professional organization also collectively working through many of these challenges. Um, you don't need to be a paying member to sign up for the Software Preservation Network newsletter, to join a working group, attend many events and calls again. So please join in that effort as well. And if you're a developer, I'll, I'll put it out there, we need better emulators, or at least we need emulators that are tailored to the needs of digital archivists, um, not just video gamers and retro computing enthusiasts. I'll call it, it out again, the situation with, with Apple, their, uh, with Motorola um, uh, 68K emulators, PowerPC emulators now, even uh, increasingly Intel Mac emulation in particular um, is not great. And I would love to know how we can support making it better. And if all of this is really resonating, um, sounds exciting and like something you would like to work on every day, uh, you may be in luck. This is truly breaking news this week, um, a bit of a no time to wait exclusive, uh, but our program manager of four years, Seth Anderson, has just announced that he is leaving Yale for another opportunity. Wonderful for him, of course, sad for the team. Um, we hope the search for his replacement to begin as soon as possible. I really don't have any more details than that right at this moment about what that process will look like, but um, please keep an eye out. And if you would like to reach out and have particular questions in the meantime, I'm certainly available. Uh, I, again, in the slides have some, some links um, that I will hopefully share out with everyone, but also put up my contact info. But thank you for having me today. Thank you so much, Ethan.